Good morning. It is 22 minutes past 8. Just woke up, had my chicken burger for breakfast. Don't ask. Uh, here we are in Kempella. Don't look down. Ooh. So this is my normal go-to place. Exactly halfway up Finland, so it's a nice, it's a nice place to stop overnight. So I've got another like eight or nine hours to drive today. So just thought I'd show you a quick, quick thing of this, because I will probably feature this place in many future videos. So it's like a little sort of uh, studio apartment. You get fridge. All pots and pans and plates and all that stuff. Microwave, coffee maker, kettle. Not sure what's in there. So, but it's nice. It's like seventy-five euros, and uh, you get you get everything you need. You know, for one night. It's a key key code access, so you don't need. You can come here. Like I've I've got here before at one a.m. when I've been having a real difficult time driving up and uh, I've got here 1am before I let myself in and slept for like six hours then hit the road again it does the job it's good so this is why I didn't want to do that big walk to the electricity company this time so I did successfully charge the car last night I left the car for about an hour and a half on the charger. I got back, it was on about 96%. And uh, nobody came to charge, so I just sat, sat there till it got to 100. If anyone had have came, obviously I would have moved. But it's actually a two, you can charge two cars on this charger here. So I was only one on it, so there was still space for another car. So if anyone had a came and I was at 90 plus percent, I would have moved. I know, I know. It's it's etiquette. It's good etiquette to move on when uh, you're at like 80, 90%. But if you're sat in the car and anybody comes, then you can move. You don't you don't strictly have to move when you get to 80%. Only if you're blocking somebody who needs to charge. Anyway, let's go down to the car, see what's what. Bye bye, room. Until the next time, which is probably not long, knowing me. There is a staircase you can use if you don't like lifts, but we're on the fifth floor, so no thank you. And I'm carrying all this junk in one hand because I've got to hold the camera. Oh my god, I'm sweating. This is the thing, coming from north to south of Finland. You got your winter gear on still. Got my winter gear on. I'm sweating. I'm sweating my face off. Uh, you really need to change your clothes to get into your southern clothes. Also why I didn't want to do the walk to the uh, electricity company yesterday is that the floor is literally trying to murder you. It is just pure ice. I did not want to walk a few kilometers on this ice. Absolute ice rink. Okay, here's the Nero. Okay, it's a bit chilly then, because there's frost on the windscreen. Gonna have to do a bit of scraping here, because I can't bother waiting for the 
car to warm up. I didn't know what time I was leaving, so I didn't preheat, didn't set the preheat, I think. Which is good, good job I didn't, because I thought I was leaving earlier than I am. 8.30 is a little bit later than I wanted to leave. I wanted to leave at like 7 or 7.30. 335 metal. 335 kilometers of range. So today's plan, there is a rapid charger, the same charger that I charged on last night. The uh, There's another one, another McDonald's with another awesome charger in Uvascular. So, I wanna, today, uh, I mean, I'm not really in any rush, so I thought today I would do a little test and try to make it to this charger in one go. I've never been, in it, been able to do it in one go before. I've always had to stop at another charger on, on the way, but it's 324, <clears throat> 326 kilometers. And we have 335 showing on the car. So I think it's possible. And it's, it's nice sunny weather. The, it's, it says it's minus three. So the heat is not going to use too much. So uh, I'm gonna try that, I'm gonna see. The previous times I've wanted to do this, it's been too cold. And I've just not been able to do it. Many factors have been against me. But today we might actually do it. So fingers crossed. Let's find me a uh, ice scraper and just get that frost off the windscreen. You always want these handy, accessible, not buried in the booth. It's already starting to clear. Good heater, good heater on this car. Oh, it comes off easy. Nice. That's good. I've got no passengers, so they don't they don't matter. <laughs> I can see. Let's get the flip out of here. Beautiful day, beautiful day. I am going to need these guys today. Not just for the sun in the sky, but when you when the roads are wet or icy, the glare off the road is insane. It can be just as bright as the glare off the sun in the sky. So you always want your sunglasses driving in Finland and uh, on sunny days. Very bright place. Ah, oh, cool, look at that Lightning McQueen. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna mount the camera on my uh, DIY thingy bob. Turn right and then right. Eco mode is on. Uh, I might put the sea heater on to warm my body. So 
bit cold. Minus three. Turn right and then right. Uh, I'm gonna put the heater. It's been on 22 with the fanbo in the car because she complains that the car's too cold. So. Let's put it on 19.5. In fact, 19. Auto. Driver only. Oh. Now turn right. See what I mean about the roads? The side roads are a real mess around the traffic lights and stuff. Beautiful day. This is what it's all about. In 500 meters, turn left. This road four, it's also called the E75, European route 75. It goes from Helsinki all the way up to our, next to our house in the north. It's like 1,300 kilometers long, this, this one road that goes straight through Finland all the way up. So you hear that a lot. Road four. In Finnish, it's deer. Nelia, a dear Nell. Yeah, dear Nelia. Dear is road in Finnish. The word is tie, like the tie that you wear, T I E. But in Finnish, you say dear. And this is motori, dear. Motorway. Or motor road. charger it would be nice if that battery 
was around 20 degrees when we get to the hypercharger and then we'll get the 77 kilowatt speed it's quite difficult to get that 77 kilowatt charging speed in this e-nero in winter but today we might get it uh, anywho let's check the gps speed GPS speedometer, Digis digital meter, 94, so I've got a 100 set there, but I'm only doing 94, 90, yeah, so that's it, but I've got the winter wheels and tyres on, so it might be different with the summer wheels and tyres, but it does seem to read a little bit under. Uh, or quite a lot over actually the car but the actual Jeep it's good for speed cameras sometimes I go through speed cameras like in 80 zones I might be doing 90 and I never get flashed so uh, that is a good aspect of it <laughs> it gives you a nice little safety net but it generally means you have to go everywhere with the car set to the speed limit don't go under thinking that you're, uh, you're getting close to the speed limit, you're not. I'm doing, I'm doing like 93, 94 now, and 100. Consumption is high, 27 kilowatt hours per 100. So there's the adaptive cruise, just come on because I've gone behind this truck, let's indicate, not touching any pedals, and now it will go speed up again. going to need well under 20 consumption to make it to this charger right now it's 25.5 we're gonna need that figure to be I would say 17 17 or 18 kilowatt hours per hundred we're gonna need that figure let's check the wind Should continue to drop. 
minus one outside now. Roads are pretty dry, slightly damp, but only very slightly, but no, there's no water on the road. So the roll-on resistance is the best it's been in, in a long time. Uh, the heater is using one kilowatt, so not too bad. Still a bit higher than I would like. Because the sun should be warming up all the black surfaces in the car with the sun shining through. Mind you, the sun is still quite low. When the sun gets higher, it will start warming up all the black surfaces. So then the heater doesn't have to use much power then. The sun, the sun heats the car up. That's why I always get a black interior in every car I buy. Because it really helps. So in, in Lapland, they don't change the speed limits. They're the same all year round. Mostly 100 roads. But once you get out of Lapland, the rest of Finland, they have winter speed limits. So, 100 roads become 80. 80 roads, well, they usually stay the same, but... Motorways that are 120, they become 100. So, generally, like, they all drop by 20 kilometers per hour, the speed limits. So it's a bit slow going, because it's such a long country. You want to you want to really keep a nice average speed when you're driving this this distances. Keeping a keeping a good average speed is the key to getting somewhere a couple hours earlier. So this is quite frustrating. Going at 85 kilometers an hour, because the road's fine. You could totally do 100 on this road, it's safe. I agree, I, I do agree that that is a good idea, putting the winter speed limit in. Up until maybe the mid 90s, when cars got much, just much better, they got traction control, tire technology is much better. I don't think we need the winter speed limits anymore. I, th I think cars are just so much better now that it's safe. And also in Lapland, we don't have the winter speed limits, so there's no, there's no more crashes up there. There's more crashes in the south. Well, there's, a, there's the question of the drivers then, actually. It's not so much the cars, it's the driver's inexperience. If, like in the south of Finland, in some winters, you only get like one week of, of snow and ice. So people can sort of like, they get caught out. They're not expecting black ice or whatever. So then it does make sense to be doing 80 rather than 100. I don't know, let's test it. Let's change the speed limits for a year and see if the, if the accident rates go up, put them back. Okay, we've done 47 kilometers, and now the consumption has just dropped below 20. Now it's 19.8 kilowatt hours. Been driving for 40 minutes. So it takes a while for everything to warm up and consumption to start dropping. Even in EVs and short trips, the consumption's very high, just kind of like in a fossil car. But on a long trip, it starts, starts dropping good. We're actually, we're doing good. So there's 278 kilometers to the charger that we want, and we have 293. So we're actually gaining a little bit.
camera warning system that just saved me 150 euros. Yeah, so we're we're actually gaining more kilometers. Well, not that that gap is getting bigger, so I can probably go a little bit faster. Kilometers buffer. No, I'll, I'll still keep it quite steady. 15 kilometers isn't that much. That that will be turtle mode. I want like say 25 kilometers buffer, maybe 30 kilometers buffer. charger in Finland. It was voted on the uh, Finnish EV group. Where is the worst? What is the worst car charger? That, that was it. Never works. Efficiency or consumption is looking good. 18.8. Should continue to drop. We've driven 70 kilometers, 57 minutes, almost one hour driving. So the distance to the charger 256, and we have 275. So we've got a 20 kilometer buffer now already. That's that's excellent. So that buffer should get bigger. This is this is interesting. Uh, test this. I think this this could be the furthest I've got because I only got this car in winter, and now we have clear roads and zero degrees. It, it's zero degrees exactly. Be minus one, zero, minus one, zero. So this is this is good. This this is perfect conditions for like this range test. Couldn't ask for any more. See the flags blowing. So the wind is blowing from the west to the east as I'm heading straight south. I I don't have a headwind or I don't have a tailwind. It's just like wind should have no effect on us today. And we're blocked by the trees. The trees are blocking out a lot of the crosswinds. Perfect, perfect day. So now 254, 274. So now we have a 20 kilometer buffer. Awesome. So already I can say, even though we've still got a couple hours to go, it looks like we're gonna make it. No range anxiety whatsoever. I'd like to get past this bozo though. Enjoying a nice scenic drive through Finnish pine forests and you don't like a big dirty truck in front of you.
been a good winter in the south of Finland, so all the ski resorts in the south of Finland are open and they're good now. So I I don't know if so many people are heading north. There was quite a few people at the ski resort I just went to. We didn't go skiing, we just went sledding down a hill. They have a cool sledding hill there. There was quite a few people there. But this, this is pretty quiet for... I mean, last week they stagger it, so the holiday is a week later in different places. So the big cities in the south, Helsinki, Turku, Espo, uh, a few, a few, a few others. They had their their ski holiday week last week. So then this week, it's I think. Tampere, possibly Uvascula actually, where we're going now as well. I think that they're on ski holidays this week. But they've, that's, they've all got, I mean look at the snow here, they, they've got enough snow to do all their winter, flip an egg, nearly hit that bed. They've all got enough snow to do their winter activities. So they might not bother driving all the way to Lapland to do winter activities, which they can do at home. I don't want to be 
like running out of juice to 401 kilometers. I want to be able to like do a 400 kilometer drive at 100 kilometers per hour for four hours. That's gonna be mega. If uh... and I think based on this. Remember I've got studded tyres on? Now, studded tyres, they are not efficient tyres. Temperature is zero. Just coming up to 100 kilometers driven. So this this is going to be pretty good. This still says 252. So this is going to be a 350 kilometer range at least. So you've got a 50 kilowatt rapid charger here and you've got your AC charger. However, I am not using either today. Which feels a bit strange to be honest, but 236 kilometers are still left on the car. 213 to our destination, so it's looking good. So I'm just gonna run in, get a coffee and hit the road again. And this is a range test, so I don't want to skew if uh, the test by adding a bit of charge. So it's better just to not charge. There's a new mask. There's some pocket fluff in it. I'll go and get a coffee back in a minute. Okay, that took 60 seconds. Disinfect. Do you have this problem? You've got all these hand sanitizers and no place to put your coffee. These hand, I'm, uh, to be honest, I've had these hand sanitizers in the car way before this corona pandemic. Always had them because people are dirty buggers. I see, I see people go to the toilet and not, not wash their hands and all kinds, so every time I come out of a building, I've always, always had these sanitizers in the car for years, absolutely years. So nothing changed for me with the whole corona thing. You have to start sanitizing after you come out of everywhere. I've done that anyway. But now I've got extra, <laughs> extra sanitizers in case I run out. Okay. And then I got Vanilla Veenery. Not sure what that is in English. Tart, jam tart. Tart slice, tartar, tartare. It's not wiener, is it? Because in Finnish, Veenery. Oh no. Anyway, it's delicioso. So. I will eat that a little bit later as I'm driving. I'm gonna drink me coffee as I drive now. Are we still good? Are we still good? 235 kilometers on the gum. 213 to go. 
So we got 22 kilometers in the buffer. Now turn left and then leave the roundabout at the first exit. 18.4 consumption. Driven 114.4 kilometers Leave at the first exit. without coffee in our system. Ugh. I had I had coffee granules now and there was a the kettle, but I had no milk. And uh, Keep straight on this road. I cannot be drinking me coffee without milk. I ain't no Philistine. I actually have cream in my coffee, so even milk's a bit of a step down for me. Anywho. Back on the road. like the best service station uh, in Europe or the world or something really nice architectural design wooden cool wooden design I like it it's a nice place but I used to stop there a lot in the Jaguar I-Pace on the way up I would always that was my always stop there without fail so I've stopped there a lot of times in the past Got a nice restaurant there, nice pizza, pizzas as well. But I never stop there anymore because the charging infrastructure has evolved in Finland. So now there are better locations for me. The distances that I drive, and especially now in the Enero, which has got pretty good range. It's changed my my usual stops that I used to do the, the previous two years in my my previous EV. I needed different stops then, so don't use that anymore. So that's that is two, three charges we've driven straight past since I left the hotel in Campella this morning. We have passed three CCS charges now. Not needed to stop. Still don't need to stop. Hundred and thirty kilometers to to the charger that I want to go to, and one hundred and sixty-one on the on the gum, the gasometer. So uh, we got thirty-one kilometers spare, and that's probably going to go up. That'll prob probably be forty something. Now this is gonna be this is gonna be mega this this range. Consumption has just dropped to 17.9. So we're at 200 kilometers driven now. Just just shy of 200 kilometers, 198. And we're 17.9 kilowatt hours per hundred. And I've had the cruise set to 100 most of the way. I've done some fast overtakes that you, you've seen. I've not been I've not been nannying it. I've been going like normal, normal pace. What is the difference? Why 
am I getting so good consumption and, and range today when I don't at other times? All down to the dry road and the temperature. That's, that's your two biggest, the most important aspects in an EV. Is the road dry? Yes it is. Is it above freezing? Yes it is. It's two degrees, which is warm for, for Finland winter. Just checking my solar panels at my house in the south. Get 3.85 kilowatts now. Yay! That's nice. I'll be home in about five hours. I think one of my solar panels has fallen off. You know, if you see my video about my solar panels, I put some vertical. I think there was a storm a week ago because my power has really dropped off. My roof array is still doing good, but I'm no longer getting like two kilowatts of an evening off the side panels. So I think one of the panels has possibly fallen off and unplugged. So now that that, that string is now sort of deactivated because when you unplug one, the whole thing goes down. It's all, they're all daisy chained. So I'm looking forward to getting home and fixing my, my solar array. It was a bit wonky. It had already fallen off in a big storm and I put it up temporarily and thought, right, I'll do a more permanent repair on that soon. But then I forgot. <laughs> so now it's fallen off again. Hopefully it's not damaged. When it, it felt the first time it fell in the snow, no damage. Hopefully it's, it's the same again. There's no damage because it's, it's 140 euros for these big solar panels. So I don't want to be having to buy a new solar panel. But I'll do a more permanent fix this time. So this is interesting. The climate is using 0.00. .00. It's three degrees outside. And now it's on 0 0.24. So like I said earlier on, once that sun gets high, it starts heating up all the dark surfaces of, of the car and shining through the window. Man, it's, it, it, it's, it's nice energy, free energy from the sun. 0, 0 0.00 again. So the climate is using nothing today. 3%, 2% now. The climate is, has used only 2% of all the energy in the car. Driving is 96% of all energy usage. That's awesome. That, that is why we're getting such good range, because the heater's not using, we're not, we're not squandering a, a lot of battery energy on the heating system. Zero. Ah, oh, that's sweet. It's three degrees outside, so it's a bit chilly outside. But the sun is just, you know, a black surface radiates a thousand watt per square meter of heat energy. So basically, that is basically a thousand watt heater right there when the sun is hitting it direct. So I would say that is basically a one kilowatt heater saves one kilowatt of the car heater. Man, I love, I love like passive energy, getting energy from like the sun, just passively. It's cool. So that's, you know, that's what I like about the Ionic 5. It has those solar panels in the roof, because that, those solar panels would power the heater. On a day, on a day like today, a nice sunny day, Say they're like 500 watts or something. That that would power the heating system. As I'm only now now the heat has come back on 0 0.3, 300 watts, and I bet it goes off again now. It's just cycling on and on and off. So 
we're even on a th three degree nice sunny day they're using diddly squat on the heating so I've not needed the air conditioning on because I only got this car in December so I imagine in summer that's actually gonna start using energy to keep the car cool so then it'll be the, op the opposite effect I've always thought around 15 to 20 degrees is your perfect temperature for efficiency. So you're not you're not using any energy on heating, you're not using any energy on cooling. Everything's at a nice temperature. Well this is this is this is great. I did not expect in three degrees to be using pretty much nothing on heating. That's, that is just cool. It has the heat pump, so it's a very efficient heating system anyway. Consider taking a break. Why are you asking me that? Picture of a coffee cup. I've been driving 2 hours 54 minutes, maybe that, or maybe it thinks my reactions are slow on the steering wheel, let's see, it tells you my, my alert level, or it, it guesses, where is that? <laughs> it, it says attention level, and it's on the lowest one. How does, how does it know? Last break was 1 hour 26 minutes ago. So I must just think, because my... My, uh... Steering and stuff is so... Like, I let, I let the car do most of the work. I'm not constantly, like, adjusting. I'm so smooth, so maybe it thinks that, like... I'm falling asleep. <laughs> I'm not. I'm wide awake. My attention level is bang on. Not low like this is saying. This car insults me. this 
drive being so efficient means we're gonna need less time at this charger because we're gonna get there with like maybe 20% battery instead of maybe 7% or 8% which I thought originally so it's gonna take less time charging there the battery is at 36% now so th this is just the dream the dream day of driving an EV everything goes perfect and it, it's actually better than my expectations today I, I thought it would do okay but I, you know I wasn't sure I wasn't sure the weather was going to be this nice wasn't sure it would it would go to three degrees which is a nice temperature zero traffic just everything is just working to perfection so it, it, it's it's exceeded my expectations today this drive and when that happens it feels awesome because you have these drives that you've seen in my previous videos where you're you can get turtle mode your consumption might be quite high because of wind or wet or slushy roads you can get you can get stressed out so when you get when you get a drive that goes like this enjoy it savor it and enjoy it this is just this is just brilliant consumption is 17.4 17.4 that's, a, that's just, that's mega. I could, like, <sighs> my previous EV, I could never get that figure. It was simply unattainable. My previous EV being the Jaguar I-Pace, which is bigger, heavier, four-wheel drive. I'm not sure on the, the drag coefficient, I don't know what the drag coefficient is on this E-Nero, actually. If you know, put it in the comments. The I-Pace was 0 0.29, but it was it, it was bigger, it was wider. So the, the CDA, the total frontal area was bigger. <coughs> but this, this is just like so efficient, it blows my mind. And it's three degrees. What's it gonna be like in 23 degrees with summer tires on? Remember, I've got studded wheels on now, studded tires. Blows my mind. Let's check the battery temperature because we've been driving solid for three hours now. Well, I did stop for a to get a takeaway coffee which took like one minute so i've been driving for three hours mostly at 100 it's because of the winter speed limits some some hundred roads are 80 like this one so now i've got the cruise set to 90 so that's still i've still been doing like 50 to 60 miles per hour the whole way in the warmest part of the battery and 10 degrees in the coldest part of the battery so that's not too bad I would like it to get a little bit warmer I would like it to get to 20 the maximum and the minimum but I don't think the minimum will but that's that's pretty warm that's way warmer than usual when it's minus temperatures out so I think we're gonna get 77 kilowatts which is the maximum charging speed in the E-Nero. I think we're gonna get that today. Fingers and toes crossed, we get an almighty charging speed of 77 kilowatts. Okay, that's all for now, updates in a bit. Okay, we are very close to the charger. We have done 328 kilometers non-stop, four hours exactly, non-stop. Got tons in reserve. I'll go through the details in a minute when we get to the charger. In 500 meters. 
meters, leave the major road to the right. I'm iced. What time is it? It's lunch time. <sighs> Get to park the front of it in the busy cars. Oh, I might might be able to squeeze in here. Right, let's always charge. Let's just quickly check the battery temperature. Fourteen and sixteen. <clears throat> okay okay we have made it to the McDonald's hypercharger which is a great charger it's 225 kilowatts no one else is gonna get on because some douchebags have parked and the fossils in front of it it can take two cars simultaneously charging this so uh, let's turn climate off <clears throat> Let's focus, focus, focus. So, I'm hoping for 77 kilowatts on this charge. Just plugged in at 17%. So that trip, four hours, so it's four hours and five minutes. Uh, 16.7 kilowatt hours per hundred note to tony write the write the miles version in this in the in the screen somewhere there 330 kilometers with 58 left so that is uh, 390 kilometers i'm gonna say 390 kilometers range oh my god that's the best range I've ever got out of this E-Nero. I say ever, I've only had it a couple of months in the winter. Five degrees here. So the temperature started off when I started, it was minus three. When I started off at the hotel, it was minus three. Then it slowly went up to zero. Then it slowly went up to three. And then like the last hour it's been four. And it just got to five as I pulled in here. So, uh, between minus three and four degrees, this whole trip, four hours non-stop. I was doing the speed limits the whole way. So, um, basically I had the cruise set to 100, most on, on the 100 roads. And I had it set to 90 on the 80 roads because I like to go a little bit over. So I wasn't eco driving. I was I was going all right. You'll see like a few fast overtakes where I quickly zoomed up to 
um, slightly naughty speed limits. So, nothing um, special about that drive, like eco wise. That was just your typical drive. So, 390 kilometers, I've got studded tyres on. Uh, the roads are dry, the asphalt's dry. Four hours non stop driving. And that's, you know, that is sort of like the limitation of a human. You don't really want to go much further than that without a break. So this is nice. And this says 55 minutes till we get to 80%. Again, that that's cool. 55 minutes. I might go in Mackey's and get something. Oh, but it's so busy now. It's flipping lunchtime. Oh, but I'll have to go and get something. But I just want to see, do we get to 77%? kilowatts on this so i'm going to stop recording now because it'll take a while to for the the car battery to warm up i've noticed that it takes it's got to be over 25 degrees to start getting any sort of decent charging speed the uh the, see these temperatures here let's go off and back on so the inlet will be super warm now yeah, I, I think that's like a heater or something. Yeah, so the battery is still 14 and 16. So it's going to take a while before it gets uh, warm enough for fast speeds. So I'll go into Mackey's and when I come out again, we might be on 77. Scratch that, it just jumped to 55. It just jumped to 55. Like literally, we're on 20%. I plugged in at 17. So almost immediately it's at 55, 55. This bodes well. And the battery temperature is not even that warm. What the flip? There's been days when I've had warmer battery temperature than that. And it's refused to go to 55. So this app and these battery temperatures cannot be entirely trusted. Still says 15 and 16 degrees. So I shouldn't really be getting 50. 50 plus kilowatts speed. That's weird. <laughs> that is weird. I'm not I'm not complaining. So now it's now it's down to 53 minutes for the charge. I better hurry up then and Mackey's. So that that's definitely gonna go to 77 kilowatts that if it's jumped up basically you've got like slow which is like 46 or something and then it'll t then it will jump up to mid 50s and then it will jump up to mid 70s so it's already done its first jump almost immediately so it's definitely going to jump into the mid 70s this right i'll run in mackies and then come back out bye for now okay just got back from mackies so we are now on 37 percent no sign of the 70, mid 70s kilowatt charging yet. Still on 53. 53 kilowatts, which is not too shabby. 38 minutes until we're at 80%. Better put on the uh, limiter, the charging limiter. This, these charges, right, are weird. In the, in the app, focus. In the, in the app, it like it, it sort of crashes it charges but the app says i'm not charging so i'm kind of stuck <laughs> like i can't cancel the charging from the machine that's locked me out because the app has crashed so does it every time which is kind of cool because i don't have to pay i don't well i don't think it's charging me because it says sorry session could not be started or something and then uh so it think it thinks i'm not charging now but so I can't disconnect from the charger. So what I gotta do is mm, go into, oh, this is a nifty little trick if you're ever stuck on a, on a charger. EV, EV settings, no, EV, no, hang on a second, no. <laughs> Charge management, no. 
Surely it was in EV settings. Warning EV boost. Winter mode. Oh, it was right in front of me the whole time. So now we have to put the charging limit at 80. So the car will finish charging and then I can just pull, unplug. Don't have to mess with that machine whatsoever. So this is what I have to do when these machines like have a weird fit. Uh, never ever thing is. But that's good because it saves me like, I don't know, 12, 12 euros or something. 12, 12, yeah, it's about 14, 13, 14 euros to charge. So it doesn't seem to be charging me, so I'm saving. Not much, like, you know, but still, it's kind of getting it free. Anyway, mm, 54 kilowatts. Come on, we should absolutely, totally should be getting the mid 70s. You can do it. Fifty-four. Let's check the map. We have been just getting such good efficiency and range. Let's see. Mm. How far is home? Can I make it home from here? Can I make it home? 327 kilometers. Mm, no. Not unless I stayed here until it was at 90% or something, which I'm not gonna do because it, it just takes too long. So we'll just charge to 80 and then go and I'll, I'll do a quick a quick 10 minute stop at CCS charging ne nearer home. But we can go right, we can go pretty much the whole way and then there's a CCS charger somewhere, somewhere here. So we'll stop there and then home is not far from there. Near Turco, Turco. In summer, possibly, I can make it from this charger to home. That would be nice, but not, not quite ready yet. I don't think. I mean, it might surprise me. You know, three hundred and twenty-seven. Let's see what the range says. It's a forty-three now, so when it gets to eighty, it's gonna be about three hundred. So let's see. Could surprise us. Could could I could possibly make it home. But then I do want to hammer it on the motorways. We get some motorways and I'll do like put the pedal to the metal. Yeah. Probably stop at a CCS charger. But only ten ten more minutes. So I've I've done like I will have done how far is it home? Three hours fifty two. So let's say four hours. So I will have done eight hours driving with only like, this was 50 minute stop, and then 10 minutes at another CCS. So literally eight hours driving plus an hour charge. That's not bad, is it? EV for the win. Let's check the battery temperature. Yeah, that, that should ramp up. That's The battery is 25 degrees. This should be jumping into the mid 70s any, any minute. Sorry about that glare. But still, it's a little bit frustrating that after four hours of solid driving at 100 and at 80, basically on the, on the motorway the whole way, we still can't get 77 kilowatts. <clears throat> oh well, I'm happy with 54. No, I'm not. 
<laughs> Why did I just say that? Ah, literally just put the camera down and it's just jumped. And I can hear a fan now. Some sort of fan has activated, which wasn't on before. Yeah, now we're cooking. 74 kilowatts. Yeah, yeet. Took a while, but we got there. Now I'm happy. That's 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 a nice little charging speed. Only 25 minutes. Oh, I've barely got time to eat me Big Mac and fries. Anyway, gonna gonna eat me food now. Okay, that took 56 minutes to get to 80%. We have 292 kilometers of range. 56 minutes, and I had my lunch and everything, at the, checked a few things on my phone. Easy peasy. So now I've got the last section, basically the home straight, I call it. So I'll just have to do a quick CCS charge somewhere. Probably our, uh, and then home. So, flipping brilliant day to be an EV. -er. Everything is just going like clockwork. So, catch up with you in a bit. Bye bye. Still like 10 minutes away, so 
they've been on it a while now, so they, they're probably going to go. But we'll see when we get there. Any money, it's a Nissan Leaf or uh, Mitsubishi Outlander. Any money, it's, it's one of them too. Because it tells me that it's the Chadamo cable. They've plugged in with the Chadamo. And the Chadamo is mostly used on the Japanese... Like the, Out, the Outlander and the Leaf. I can't think what else has the, has the Chadamo. If you can think of any, write it in the comments. My brain is mush right now. So the, the Leaf... Well, it depends which Leaf. There's a few different Leafs with big, different sized batteries. But if it's a first gen Leaf, they won't be long. Because it's got a tiny battery. 24 kilowatt hour battery. Still there, I've been there a while. Let's see how far away we are from that charger. seven and a half kilometers away from the charger so could have done with maybe charging to 90 percent <laughs> at uvascular or stopped at the charger earlier but uh whatever i'm sure we'll make it good conditions plus four degrees sun is shining i'm sure it'll be fine okay good news is the person has left the charger so now that is free. Hopefully there's not a queue and someone else jumps straight on it. Because there's only one charger there. Uh, the other good news is we're only three kilometers away from that charger. And we haven't had turtle mode yet. But it's coming. <laughs> it's imminent turtle mode. We're going to get it any second. closer than I would have liked. Took my eye off the ball there. But still, didn't get turtle mode. 6% battery. This is pretty normal, like on another EV, like on my iPace, I would often get to charges with 5%. But on this, this, this one, this car makes me nervous, below 10%. Please refer to the map. Always a fun game trying to find a charger <laughs> in, a, in a car park. I know where it is, it's hidden behind this bush. But like, I long for the day that they are placed in a prominent position with their own covers, because it's no fun charging when it's raining. I'm gonna plug in.
Let's see what we're charging at. 42 kilowatts. That'll do. So, now oh, we're back to 7% already. So, it's 40, 40 kilometers, 46 kilometers to home. So, we have 23 kilometers of range, 46. Now let's charge to 70. Uh, always nice to have like 20, 20, 30 kilometers extra buffer. Yeah, let's charge to 70 something. I mean, I'm going in to get a coffee and a, another tart. So, uh, it'll probably be something like that when I come back out and go to the loo. So I'll give an update in a bit. But so far, all good. Teeny, like, teeny tiny bit of range anxiety there. I won't lie. Didn't think I was gonna cut it that close, but I did. Gosh, look at that. Looks like total spring here now. And that feels. Amazing country, this. Big truck. You can drive, like it's full on winter in the north. Still a metre deep snow. And then down here, the farmers are gonna be out, out working these fields in the, the next week. It's so, it's just so, so interesting driving through such a long country and you can see the seasons change before your very eyes. It's brilliant, I love that. Okay, just got back with my coffee. I'm already on 68 kilometers. Ah, I've literally got enough to leave already. 20% already. Flipping heck, that was fast. Well, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna, I got, I'll show you what I got. I've just disinfected my hands, by the way. This bad boy, called a Voy Silma Bulla, Voy Silma Bulla. It means a butter eye bun, or yeah, Bulla, Bulla's bun, or roll. A buttered eye, because <laughs> it looks like an eye made out of butter, some sort of butter sweet. It's, ni it's nice, good savouries in Finland. My favourite is the cinnamon, cinnamon roll. Oh, I love them, but they didn't have them. And for starters, at the main course, I have a good old fashioned croissant. Mmm. Nothing special, nothing in it, just a normal croissant. And that is my road food. Already good to go. Man. You don't have time to flip and do anything. This charging is too fast. I'm gonna eat me croissants now. I'll have a sip of coffee. The pressure of the pressure of being fully ready to go. I will eat eat the croissant, drink a bit of coffee then unplug and go and I'll eat me eyeball, me butter eyeball bun on the uh, on the motorway. <laughs> so it is 5.51 p.m. is when we get home. Now it's 11 minutes past five. So we've got like, what, 40 minutes, 46 kilometers. But some of it's motorway and I'm gonna put the hammer down. So, uh, Say 35 minutes and then we are home, sweet home. So I'll give an update when I get home. In a bit. Now turn off to the right.
to junction this. Now keep left. So this is the ring road now around Turku. Or as the Finns say, Turku. So this is like kind of my home city. We're, we're 25 minutes, minutes away from the city. Kilometers. Keep straight on this road. Well, like, this is my stomping ground, this now. Exactly yesterday. Midday I set off from Sari Selka. And now I'm getting home just before 6 pm. So it's 30 hours, bang on. I could have done it faster. Uh, but as usual, I stay in the hotel way too long. But as I say, I'm in no rush. I I like uh, this. Is, so this is the bridge to our island. This is Pad Island Bridge. I live I live in a place called Pad Island. Check that out. I ju I just love this place. The Ar the Finnish archipelago. There's, there's thousands of islands here. It is beautiful. This is this is why I live here. Hey, that's still frozen, that bit. That's it. That's actually part of the Baltic Sea. It comes in. There's no tide here either, so the sea is always in. And there's not much salinity in that seawater, so it's mostly freshwater fish that live in the sea. You go you go fishing in that sea, and you're pulling out pike and perch. Pretty crazy. It's just not salty. There's no sea fish in it. They say a hundred years ago. Meters, turn left. I know where I'm going. Hundred years ago, they say there was cod in there, but I don't believe it. In two hundred meters, turn left. Always nice driving home here. Now turn left. When you live in a nice place. Yeah. For the next 2.2 kilometers, keep straight on this road. All right, all the snow has gone off this side road. All the gravel remains, though. You can hear it. Chinging and pinging off the car. Yeah, so what was I saying? <laughs> I love bridges. As soon as I see a bridge, I'm like, ooh, bridge. Yeah, so, okay, uh, I don't know what the the consumption is for the whole trip, because I reset I reset the data, the trip data, on, on different legs. So I've got the whole data for today. The data for today is I've been driving for eight hours and two minutes at this moment in time. I charged for 56 minutes in New Vascular, and then 17 minutes 
in Aura where I went for my coffee and croissants and butter eye bun butter bun so not much charging on this on today flipping but brilliant brilliant day feels like I've got here quite early as well it's 5.52 p.m. Uh, so consumption is 16.9 for the whole day which is pretty outstanding the temperature is 3 degrees so it never really got warmer than 5 started at minus 3 this morning in Campilla and it went up to like 5 in New Vascular briefly while I was charging and now it's 3 again so not a warm day but that efficiency is just that's just the same. 16.9. In 500 meters, turn left. Remember to put the, the miles figure, Tony, note yourself when watching this back. I think I can turn the navigation off now because I know where I live. And we've still got 48 kilometers of range, so I, I didn't need to charge. For 17 minutes in that hour, 10 minutes would have done. But I wanted, I wanted to eat my croissants because they're so crummy. I didn't want to be getting crumbs all over my belly when I was driving on the motorway. Okay, so thanks for joining me on this trip. I'm gonna go now, and uh, until the next time. Bye bye. Oh, just uh, one more thing. Sound like Colombo. Uh, just one more thing. That was not Colombo. You know, I said in the uh, in Lapland, uh, it would be nice to see some deer, reindeer, or a moose. And fortunately, we didn't see any. Now that I'm back in my house in the south, would you like to see some deer? Because I can currently see. most deer I've ever seen. Hey, there's me, there's me wind turbine spinning like a boss. Holy macaroni! I've never seen that many deers. There's my solar panel that fell off. That should be a fence. Check this out. Let's count them. Oh my god, that's insane. One, two, three, four, five, five, I can't even count them. So there you go, there's, there's your deer. There's your deer footage. <laughs> Flippy flip. Invasion of the road deers.